Hey there, bands. Welcome back. And it looks like you're moving right along. We're going to pick up right where we left off. And this time we're going to talk about the bass clef. So let's just review real quick before we jump back into uh, musictheory.net. We talked about the staff, which has five lines. We talked about the treble clef, also known as the G clef. And it sort of tells us where G is going to be on the staff. It's kind of like when you look at a map and it has a compass rose on it and you can tell which way is north, south, east, and west, etc. This new cleft is called the bass cleft. It's going to tell us where F is. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open up a share screen here and you'll be able to see what I see in just a moment. All right, here we are, right where we left off. So Next, let's discuss the bass clef, also called the F clef. It's called the F clef because it's going to tell us where F is. You'll notice that the two dots, uh, if you look at my mouse, the two dots surrounding that fourth line there indicate where F is. And there's also the beginning of the symbol starts right there on the F line. Okay? Um, let's hear what F sounds like. And once again, I did not turn on the audio. Give me just a moment here to fix that. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. And so when I hit this button, you should hear F. Okay, now let's fill in the rest of the staff with the notes. So you see they filled in the notes going up and they also did the ones going down. So uh, it follows the alphabet just like the treble clef, it just starts in a different place. So the fourth line is F. If you go up, it goes to G and A. We can start at F again and we can count our alphabet backwards. So F, E, D, C, B, A, and G. On the treble clef, the notes were different. You remember on the treble clef, it was every good boy does fine. So the phrase that we're going to do for the bass clef, I want you to write this down, is this phrase Good burritos don't fall apart. All right, that's easy to remember. Go ahead and write that down. Good burritos don't fall apart. All right. If you need to pause, you, you can do so, um, but I'm going to keep on going. So the good burritos don't fall apart. Again, we can count that on our hands. So if I hold my hand out here like it's a staff, we're going to count it from the bottom to the top. So this bottom line down here would be good, G, burritos, B, don't, D, fall, F, apart, A. And you can check my work on the staff. Look where my mouse is, starting at the bottom line down here. It says G, good, B, burritos, D, don't, F, fall. And the top line is A, apart. Good burritos don't fall apart, all right? The other phrase, and if you'll write this one down as well, is uh, all cows eat grass. And that's for the spaces on the bass clef. And you can check the work on that too. If you look at my mouse here, the bottom space is A, so all, C, cows, eat, E, and grass is on the top space up here. Okay? And you can do the finger trick again just like you did before. So if it's on the line and we're in the bass clef, you got good burritos don't fall apart. And if it's in the space in between those, you have all cows eat grass, okay? There's tons of different phrases. Um, if, uh, if you have one that you wanna email to me, and if you wanna share, you know, feel free to do that. I've heard all sorts of ones, uh, but yeah. All right, so that's the bass clef. Um, let's go ahead and move on. I think it's gonna talk about putting them together. So finally, we will discuss the great staff, a theoretical staff consisting of 11 lines, all right? Also known as grand clef. This is what uh, piano players read. Watch what happens when we eliminate the middle line. We end up with two regular staves, all right? So there's five lines at the bottom, five lines at the top, and we just took away the middle line there, okay? By adding a treble clef to the top staff, and a bass clef to the bottom staff, we can see the relationship between the two staffs. Notice how the two clefs are joined by the C. 
All right, so this middle C that you know comes in between those two staffs, that's what connects them together. That's where they meet and that's where they all line up. This C is commonly called middle C since it corresponds to the middle staff line and the grand staff, okay? So uh, there, there's some terminology there. Go ahead and write down grand staff. It's calling it grand, or it's, it's calling it great stave on here. Not a lot of people call it that. Write down grand staff. And for your definition for that, it's when you put the treble clef and the bass clef into one big staff. All right. You can pause if you need to write that down. The next term you need to write down is middle C. All right. And middle C is the note in between the grand staff, that C on the ledger line right there, that connects the two. So there's another term there. And you can draw a picture of that too in your third column. All right. And that pretty much explains the, uh, the two clefs that are most commonly used. We have treble clef and bass clef. So uh, if you'll look at my mouse here, we're gonna review the acronyms and then I'm gonna call this video done, okay? So let's start back at the treble clef, which we did in the other video. Uh, if you look at my mouse here, so we said every good boy does fine on the line, okay? So watch the mouse, the bottom line, every good boy does that fourth line fine on the line. And then we said face in the space. So if you're looking at the spaces, you have F, A, C, E. That's a quick way to identify what note it wants you to say for the treble clef. Now, switching gears to the bass clef, uh, this one's also known as the F clef because it tells you where F is supposed to be. And the acronyms for that were, uh, if it's on the line, good burritos don't fall apart, right? So look at the screen here, good, G, burritos, B, don't, D, fall, F, apart, A. All right, that's your lines. And then your spaces are all cows eat grass. So starting at the bottom again, all cows eat grass. Now, there's gonna be an exciting um, sort of quiz activity that you can do. It's a uh, music flashcard website, and I'm gonna pull it up right now. We'll go ahead and connect that um, into our next video. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, you'll get some good practice on this in the next activity. Good luck.